Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kamala and I work for the Technology and Services Division of the uh, Business France India. Let me welcome you all to the roundtable discussion on strengthening businesses in a post-COVID world that Business France and Sopra Steria are organizing. As we begin, may I please request you to, uh, to mute your mic and uh, off the camera. You can switch them on if you have a question to ask in the question answer session or during the interaction. For your information, this session is being recorded. Let me now call upon Tarun Singhal, the Director uh, of Business Development, Marketing and Communications at Sopra Steria and Sopra Banking Software India, who is uh, actually a living bridge between India and France to open the session. Tarun, uh, over to you. Thank you, Kamala. Boswari, good evening and namaskar to all of you. On behalf of Business France, Soprest Area, and the panelists, I, Tarun Singhal, welcome you all at this important roundtable series. Today's topic is uh, strengthening business in a post-COVID world. With that, I am delighted to welcome and introduce His Excellency, Mr. Emmanuel Lena, Ambassador of France to India. Please unmute your microphone and switch on your camera and welcome Ambassador Lena with a big round of digital applause as he delivers and enlighten us with the keynote address. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Thank you, very kind of you. Thank you, Tarun, and uh, I'm delighted to uh, to be with you uh, today. I must say that one of the good things uh, uh, of uh, that period is that we we've learned how to uh, to meet digitally, and thanks to to companies such as uh, Soprasteria, we can have such a great uh, roundtable or or events. And thank you also to to Business France to uh, to to co-host and co-organize. Our next round of speakers are Mr. Eric Fajol and Mr. Ram Kumar Sekharan, who would help set the context and their expectations from this roundtable series. Mr. Eric Fajol is the commercial advisor and trade commissioner, French embassy in India, and regional director, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. He has been associated with Business France India since 2017 and has been strategically working towards strengthening the business ties between the two countries, India and France. Mr. Ram Kumar Sekran is the Chief Delivery Officer at Sopra Steria in India. He has been working with the Sopra Steria Group for over 30 years. Proficient in the global delivery model, he has been involved in delivering large global IT tech programs and projects. May I now request Eric and Ram to please switch on their video in the cam video camera mode and share your thoughts. Thank you. Good afternoon to, to everyone. I have a very short presentation just to uh, show you uh, what France is doing after this COVID period and what is the, the French recovery plan all about. It will give you some ideas and some uh, uh, sectors where France is investing a lot in the coming years uh, and where the cooperation with India and Indian companies can focus according to what the French government is doing in France. Good evening all and a very warm welcome on behalf of the Soprasteria family you know, to this flagship roundtable series in the August company of French ambassador and also other dignitaries and panelists from leading French and Indian companies and from various industries. So good evening all once again. So we Soprasteria are very glad to be hosting this event along with Business France. So as a leading European company in consulting and digital services, what we as an organization do is work with customers in various industries in realizing their digital transformation journeys. 
in order to obtain basically tangible and of course sustainable benefits. So in that context, the topic today is of a lot of interest to us and also te other technology companies like us in order to understand how industries will adapt in a post COVID world and more specifically, you know, identify and discuss ways in which French and Indian companies in India can collaborate and strengthen business in a post COVID world. So I hope that you know we are able to make the most of this interactive session and I'm looking forward to it and also that we continue to collaborate and co-create a conducive environment. So with that, I know I would like to pass the baton back to Tarun to introduce my colleague Bruno, you know, who will moderate this roundtable. Without further ado, let me welcome Mr. Bruno Duret. France Offshore Director for Sopra Steria, India. He would introduce the panelists and be your moderator for the rest of the session. Over to you, Bruno. To go to this one table, what, what are the objectives of this one table? Uh, the objective is not to go and to see the past. The objective is really to see uh, how we have deal with some uh, uh, with this uh, crisis and to anticipate the future and to see uh, what this pandemic has changed in our way of working, in our relations and in, in our uh, situation and activity. So for this one table, I have the, the great pleasure to, to moderate with six companies, as you see in the logos and, uh, on our backdrops. And I'm very, very glad to welcome uh, first Mr. Emar de Lidekerk Beaufort, who is the CEO of BNP Paribas India. Welcome, Mr. Emar. Also, Dr. Aaron Jora, who is the Managing Director of Michelin India. Also, welcome, Dr. Jora. Thank you, Bruno. Uh, Mr. Bala Mahadevan, CEO of Orange Business Services India. Uh, Mr. Eisenhower, uh, Managing Director of uh, Saint-Gobain uh, Glass Solution and Strategic Project in Saint-Gobain, India. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Sonik Shah, uh, Global Head of uh, Société Générale Global Solution Center in India. Mr. Shah. Thank you, Bruno. Welcome. And uh, last but not the least, Mr. Surandara Jan, uh, Managing Director of Renault. Uh, RNTBCI, so Renault uh, Nissan Technology and Business Center in India. Thank Hello, you. Mr. Uh, I propose to go straight to the to, to maybe to my to my first uh, question, and uh, my my first question will be on how could you how could you see the the impact of the COVID crisis on uh, your business and your uh, relation also with your French partners. Uh, how do you analyze that uh, from HR perspective or team or business or which vision you want? And uh, to start, maybe maybe Mr. Remar, if you want to start. Yes, I am very happy to start. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Happy to be here with you today. Uh, I think COVID crisis has triggered uh, uh, different uh, different stages at the beginning. Uh, we had an immediate uh, an immediate uh, reaction. Uh, when things started uh, uh, with a very strong uh, uh, lockdown. Uh, and then when it, it was very clear it would uh, last a long time, we started to, to think, how can, are we going to be resilient? And I would say now, one year and a half later, uh, we are, how we are going to fundamentally change uh, our business model because it's not going to be the same. There is a, a pre-COVID and a post-COVID. Uh, post Alors, I have to admit uh, uh, that in the banking sector, compared to some of my colleagues uh, around the table, uh, the bank uh, uh, was considered as an essential service, and uh, we, ne we have never been closed. I've always been open, and, and somewhere, somewhere, it was easier for us to adapt to this new uh, to this new environment. Um, so yes, um, as as uh, Mr. Emar said, uh, you know, bank have been a little bit more fortunate uh, in in the pandemic. Uh, as as you said, it was classified as essential service, so the impacts of the lockdowns were minimal. And also importantly, for our center here in Bangalore and Chennai, uh, 
uh, we we provide a lot of uh, uh, IT, you know, technology and operations uh, support uh, back office to to our global setup, be it in Asia or uh, or or in Europe or in the Americas. And and uh, again, uh, we were able to quickly adapt all of those activities from a from a remote model, you know, to a work from home model. So mm -hmm. essentially, we were able to shift within days the entire workforce of 8,000 plus people to be able to do uh, their activities from home. So to that extent, uh, the business activity, the production, the interactions were were different, but but not really impacted. Thank you, Bruno. First of all, uh, thank you, uh, Business France and uh, Sopra Steria for inviting uh, Michelin to this uh, forum here. Uh, we really appreciate uh, being a part of this. So uh, talking about uh, the overall impact, I would say it has impacted uh, the economy. It has impacted the relationships it has in, in a good way and also in a not so good way. <clears throat> uh, as was mentioned by uh, Monsieur uh, Emmanuel, the solidarity aspects have grown quite a bit. I mean, everyone is willing to help and pitch in to co-construct. I think co-construction is something that we are everybody's sort of uh, gone into for newer avenues, new age technologies, investments, uh, or talk about digitalization. You know, these, these are the things that we see are really growing very well. However, having said that, uh, the supply chain, of course, had been affected. I mean, there was an impact uh, on raw materials. Um, you know, when we uh, when the pandemic started, it still continues. Uh, you know, an example uh, is again. You know, it's not directly related to the tire industry, but it's related to the mobility industry. Thanks to Business France and to Sofra Studio for this platform. Uh, it's a it's a good connect after Dr. Jora speaking speaking mm -hmm. on Michelin. Uh, we will talk about how mobility industry went through a big, uh, big change. Uh, right from the uh, 2020 uh, March, when the COVID really, really hit India, uh, there were two uh, dark spots in the automotive industry in India, uh, spanning of the of the order of eight to ten weeks, where people stopped buying cars. We know for the reasons that it is. Uh, safety and health as the most important reason. So 12 weeks, zero production. <laughs> Thank you. I thank uh, the French Chamber and so, uh, Soprasteria for this platform. See, Sankopan, the glass industry is a continuous process industry, so we cannot stop. So this is something else which in the pandemic were really affected, especially the first pandemic lockdown. We had uh, foreseen it to some extent and managed to keep about 20% of our people within the factory and run the continuous process so that the factory does not close in all our three locations. We thank the state governments in all the three places for having helped us to do that. Coming back to the business, yes, business was affected very badly during the first 60 days of last year. But later, it definitely has picked up tremendously. We can see that slowly the pickup went up very well, except when again it got hit by the second wave. You know, for us, uh, three or four points so that I don't repeat anything that has been said already. Like every company, uh, we also had to uh, very quickly adapt to remote working. And for us, uh, probably a little bit like banking, it's always a little easier because we are a technology mm. company. But please remember there are two things. Uh, not only are we responsible for making sure our people work remotely well and securely, we also have the responsibility to make sure our customers also do so. So we have many of our global customers whom we have to enable a rapid shift of work, rapid shift of workloads, uh, and we did that very successfully. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for moderating that session and thanks everybody for joining and making this roundtable discussion a success. Because when we started, you know, the intent of this roundtable was to see new ideas, identify opportunities for enhancing collaboration, you know, between India and France in a post-COVID world. And I could see that there were quite a few pointers around these when it started with the ambassador mentioning about the positivity of the environment in India. And also all of you mentioned about the long-term potential and the enhancement of the solidarity or empathy. <clears throat> it was a lot of thing about agility and the need to co-construct dig digitalization. So there were quite a few suggestions and pointers, you know, which you all brought out. Of course, managing workforce strengths and also attrition, you know, which seems to be common across industries. That was also another point. So thanks for all these inputs. 
you know, so once again, on behalf of the Supra Steria family, I would like to thank all our distinguished panelists, you know, for their overwhelming participation, coming out with, you know, open suggestions as well. And special thanks to the attendees from, you know, Airbus, Technical Lab, Thales, Alstom, Thales, and Peugeot. I mean, I have a list of other organizations who had joined today, like Lyra, Sanofi, Tony Perlan, Intelligence, Credit Agricol, Centum Electronics, SLR Radio, and also Femeco. I think when I have missed some people, I mean, these are, this is a list I could find in the attendees. So thanks to all of you for participating. As a commitment from Soprest area, what, what we will do is we'll continue to host such focused events in order to reimagine, realign, and also, you know, redesign our approach for a better tomorrow. My sincere thanks as well to the team at Business France and Soprest area and the teams from the offices of all your distinguished panelists because they did take out time and, you know, there was a lot of back-end activity that is required, so thanks to all of them. If all of you, please do share your inputs if you have any in order to make this event better going forward. You can share it with either Kamala or Ishika of Soprasteria. So that's all I have to say. Once again, thanks everybody. And of course, we look forward to meeting you all in person, more probably very soon. Back to you, Bruno. Maybe over to you, Eric for the closure remarks. <laughs> thank, thank you, Bruno. Thank you, Ram and, and Tarun and all the Sopra Terxteria team. It, it was a real pleasure to listen to all of you, especially the head of French business in India with this uh, positive uh, feedback of what you have done during the second wave, what you have learned after that wave is totally different from what we heard from the press and what the French press has covered about India during that period. So it's important also for you to make this information available. And that's what we are doing as Business France in France to your head office to tell that what is written in the newspaper is not exactly what is happening here. Mm -hmm. And I think French company were very resilient, maybe much more resilient this year than last year. I have seen also that a uh, lot of company, they stayed in India, the expats stayed in India, we stay in India uh, during the second wave as an embassy, as a consulate, because we thought that uh, India will go through that second wave and we had to stay here with, with our Indian colleagues and, and friends. And the vaccination campaign of France for the, for the French uh, uh, community, but also including some Indian staff of us, was also important to show the commitment of France to, as you said, for your own company, that people were first and business second. Also for France, uh, the people were first and, and we wanted to have this uh, safety for our people. So it was, and I, I was very happy to hear that even Saint-Gobain continued to produce glass because I know that Lactalis was continuing to produce dairy product because they were saying that the cows were still producing milk. But even in the glass industry, you, you never stop producing. So that's very good. And the automotive sector as well. So I think that is a good learning. And the solidarity that you have uh, shown through our partner, IFKI, but also with the French embassy at the ambassador state for the oxygen supply and equipment from France uh, was also important. And to answer the question about the, what, what can we do in the health sector, I think we can be better uh, and provide more oxygen equipment and solution and technique from France because we have a very good healthcare system and we can offer more uh, to, to, to India. Also another learning that you were all agile, flexible, creative and that also it's a big learning from the first, uh, first wave even if uh, you cannot travel and, and I, I'm very sad for that that is very uh, impossible for you to travel to France those days uh, still because of the quarantine, because of the visa issue and the go away uh, documents. But we expect uh, to receive a business delegation from France in September, according to the third wave or not third wave. Uh, and I hope that uh, some ministers, we have the Minister of Industry, she will come. She's due to come in October in Hyderabad and Delhi. Uh, for French Fab India that we will co-organize with IFKI. And this is important because Hyderabad is a new city where France wants to grow and France wants to be present and more present. 
And uh, that's it. And I think you, you all say that, and the ambassador said, we believe in the in the capacity of India of uh, bouncing back. We believe in this country. As you know, the strategic partnership between France and India is very strong politically, uh, is very strong in defense. But when we listen to you, all of you, uh, it's also very strong in the industry for the make in India and for the, the French technology to be promoted here. On, on the market and we believe in India, but also my last remark is I'm very impressed by the quality of the CEOs of French company we have in India. Uh, as you can see on the videos, most of you are Indian and, and we have very few French people today. That shows that uh, France believe in India, but we also believe in Indian talents. Uh, and, and, and I've seen that even in France, sometimes they want also to have those talents coming from India to work in the head office. So that is very important and we are very confident about uh, what will happen uh, in the next months uh, between France and India. And we hope to see you physically uh, in Hyderabad uh, and, uh, and beginning of October. And in France, we'll have a big event end of October at the French Senate uh, to promote India also towards France. I think India needs more promotion in France. We are working very strongly with the Indian ambassador in Paris. To, to promote and to create a club and with IFKI to be more present in France also to promote what is the real India today uh, towards the, the French com business community. So thank you once again, Sopra. And uh, Business France, our team in Delhi, Chennai, um, Bangalore and Mumbai are very uh, open and, and very uh, I mean supportive of, of anything you might need from us or from IFKI. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all and have a good evening.